Hi guys, my name is Ashley. I'm here just to talk to you guys about what it's like owning a French Bulldog. <laughs> I wish you had my imagination. Okay, so I'm going to start off by telling you guys how I got this little guy here. So, um, back in 2019, I want to say, yeah. So I met my boyfriend, and um, I've always been one. I've always wanted a French bulldog. Um, he knew um, his brother's girlfriend had a French French bulldog already, and she knew a reputable breeder. And so I went. I followed the breeder on Instagram. I started looking. You know, I wanted to find the perfect one, and also one that I like bonded well with, because the bond is always very important. Uh, once I found one on Inst she posted him on Instagram and I messaged her about him. Uh, so as soon as I saw him, I fell in love. He was the cutest little guy. He was only five pounds and I instantly fell in love with him. We had a great bond and that same day I took him home with me. Um, I bought him and ever since then it's just been great. So you guys are probably wondering um, what it's what a French Bulldog's personality personality is like. Um, so they're very special dogs. I want to say they're very interesting. They would definitely make you laugh every day uh, with some weird stuff they would do. Um, they're great apartment dogs. One, so if you have an apartment um, or just looking for a dog that's not high energy, you don't need to take on constant walks and anything then a French Bulldog is perfect for you. But um, they are very lazy dogs. Uh, they love to sleep. They'll probably have a spur, like one spur of energy, also known as very like much known in public as the Zoomies. So another thing that's really important when it comes to French Bulldogs is uh, allergies. They, a lot of them have allergies, especially skin allergies. Um, I know with him, I had a couple issues with his skin. Um, I had him on, on natural food, like, you know, the kind of food that's just like human grade food cooked for them. And I had him on that kind of food and he didn't react well to it. He ate it for a while. He was eating it for a good, like six months, I want to say. And I didn't start noticing that I started noticing that he was, his skin on his face was getting really red and irritated after like three months of him being on that same food. And I really didn't think it was a food. I thought it could have been like another environmental issue just because you always hear such great things about human grade food. One, it's super expensive and you think that you're giving your dog the best food there is. So why would he be allergic to any of that if it's just human grade food? Um, but I ended up, you know, taking the chance and just taking him off the food to see if the skin issue will go away. And it actually did. As soon as I got him off the food and put him to regular kibble food, um, well, it's like a natural kibble food. It was like a lamb recipe. Um, his skin just automatically, like within a week, it cleared up so well. Like before, it was just red and like even his skin looked flaky. Like it, pieces of it were coming off. It was just really bad. And you could tell he was bothered and he would always like itch it. So... Um, that was a really big issue with him. Um, but yeah, it's super common. Also, their paws, the bottom of their paws get really red if they're allergic to something and they start like licking it. Um, so you will know if your French Bulldog is allergic. It's just, they are so allergic. They're allergic to so many things that I would recommend. I even thought so about myself doing a food allergy test on him just so I couldn't avoid that in the future because it's a mess and you really don't know. and. It's just a mess having them on, um, you know, being allergic to something. It's just better knowing what to avoid if you can avoid it. So you guys are probably wondering um, the whole nasal situation with French Bulldogs because whenever you think of a Frenchie, the first thing you think is, oh, the snoring that comes with it, the little piggy, piggy noises they make. Mm -hmm. So that's the brachiocephalic syndrome. A lot of them do have it. Um, mine storm here when I first got him, I noticed he started snoring within like, I want to say a month that I got him. Already, at, I got him when he was three months. So already at four months, he was already snoring. Like little snores, but he was snoring. And um, 
I when I took him to the vet, they told him they told me most likely he will need uh, the 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 surgery where they open up the nostril so he can breathe better because it was just really bad. Um, also, we noticed that um, sometimes when he would get out of breath, like uh, he would, uh, you hear like a flapping noise in the back of his throat. And we also found out that he may need the uh, palate surgery. And in his case, when he went to do the um, nose surgery, they were also, they, since he was already asleep, they checked to see the palate so they could just do both at the same time. And it turns out that his palate was super elongated to the point where it was almost blocking his throat. So he cut a piece of his palate and put it on, opened up his nostrils. And he's been doing so much better since. I mean, he does snore still a little bit, but that's just part of his personality. Um, when he talks to you, when he wants a treat, when he wants water, he'll snore. But that's just him trying to talk. Other than that, he's pretty good. He's been so much better with the snoring. Before, it was so bad. Almost to the point where, like, you can't sleep because he sounds like a wildebeest, basically, um, snoring. Um, but he's doing so much better now. And this one here, this is Maddie, if you guys didn't know. Uh, we decided to get her about a year, when he turned a year, we got him, we got another one a year later because when you have one, you, when you get one Frenchie, you can, can't get enough of them. They're like the best. But she, um, she's actually one of the first French Bulldogs I know that doesn't have any breathing issues. She doesn't snore at all, uh, which is great. And it's so funny because she actually has really small nostrils. So you would think she would have breathing issues, but she doesn't. Um, she doesn't snore at all. She's super quiet. She's very rare. She's br it's very rare to find a French Bulldog that is like her. So like I said previously, once you get one, you have to get another and it's like addicting. The reason I say that is because of their personalities, just how they are, it's like so contagious. They're one of the most loyal dogs that you would ever find. Um, if you want a dog that's gonna be complete, super loyal to you, basically like if you're in a room full of people and you want a dog that's just gonna look at you, then you need to get a French Bulldog because they're just so like, they just love you so much and they don't even need to tell you that like you could just tell by how they are with you um if you want a dog that's super cuddly that you'll sit on the couch to watch tv and not only will the dog just sit next to you to watch the tv but will all get like on top of you to watch the tv then you need a french bulldog um they're the best honestly um it's like almost like your best friend i know like it's cliche to say oh your dog's your best friend but they really are. Um, this little guy here, like, I don't know, like, what I would do. My life would be so completely different if I didn't have him. He's just the best. He makes any sad day, like, so much better. If I'm having a bad day, I can always just hug him, and he just makes it 100% more better. Um, so, yeah, honestly, if you really want a dog that's just going to be super dependable, and also a dog that you can kind of take mostly anywhere, like, without it being an issue, a dog you could take to Target, a dog you could take to the mall, a dog that you could take to the store, any store, um, a dog that you could take on vacation, um, really like, cause on a plane, like having a small dog is easier, but any, like a dog basically that you could just take mostly anywhere, then you need a French Bulldog. Um, they're so easy to take places, honestly. And they're not much barkers at all, uh, so you don't have to worry about that being in a public place with him and him starting to bark or her starting to bark. Um, yeah, honestly, it's just they're the best. They're like the next level to having a child almost. Another thing I would like to talk about is um, making sure they have plenty of snacks during the day, also plenty of water. Um, with water, it's a little hard with Frenchies. They kind of have this thing where they don't know when to stop with drinking water and it makes them throw up if they drink too much water. So, um, like Maddie here, she actually had a situation actually like a couple months ago where um, my boyfriend left her outside on the balcony for just like a second and he put two water bowls out there. And like he didn't think she would drink all of it, but she did. She didn't know how to stop. And, um, she drank all the water and she basically got drunk off the water uh, to the point where she was actually acting like a drunk person. She was like doing the loopy thing that you would do when you're drunk and just non-constant throwing up. She even like peed herself laying down because of how much water she had intake. She 
Um, sorry, like, to be very uh, specific, but she also had, like, diarrhea. Like, she was literally... She vomited and did diarrhea at the same time, which I didn't even know that was possible, like, in a dog. I know it happens to people when they're very under, like, un like very drunk, but I didn't know this could happen to a dog. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, so we found out later on that she was drunk off water, which now I learned something new about a dog as well because I didn't know that was possible. Uh, they don't know when to stop, like I said, so they, um, so we never keep the water bowls out. Instead, we just remember to keep, um, to just hydrate them throughout the day. So we always keep their bowl up there and whenever we come, we're just like, hey, here, we'll like leave it down at eye level and like we won't even put it on the ground. We just hold it and then they drink water and then we take it away from them. That way we know they're not going to like overly drink water. So we usually, we have a set schedule. We feed them at 11 a.m. And then we feed them again at 6, 6 30 p.m. We used to actually feed them really early. They used to eat like at 7 in the morning, um, 6 in the morning, but they kind of grew out of that as they got older. And plus, since we've been working from home now due to the whole pandemic, um, we don't have to feed them before we leave to work. So we've been feeding them like at 11 when we're already home. So they like that. They like that feeding schedule better. But I was noticing sometimes actually with Storm here, I would feed him like 6, 6 30. And then, sorry, he's like tired and snoring here. Oh, he's talking. So I would feed him at 6.30 and I would see that he wakes up. The next day, sometimes he'll throw up like, uh, almost like, uh, he'll throw up like bile, like the yellow bile from your stomach, like stomach acid. And I was like, why would he, why is he throwing up? Like, I don't understand. This isn't every day either. It's like once in a while that he'll go, like he'll start gagging and then the yellow bile will come out. And I was like, what is that? Um, so I started doing my research, I talked to my vet as well, and I found out that dogs can get gastritis as well, and that's what he was getting, gastritis, which is so weird because I have gastritis, so he's basically like my kid, he's just like me, um, but I didn't know it was possible for them to get gastritis, so it's basically just like gas build up in their stomach um, from just going too many hours without eating, I mean that's exactly what happens to me sometimes, so I have to remember to eat, um, so him, I guess, just eating dinner at 6, 6.30, and then going to bed and not eating again till 11 the next day. It's just way too many hours for his stomach to deal with on like an empty stomach. So I started doing, um, I started incorporating late night like snacks before bed. Um, obviously nothing unhealthy, nothing like peanut butter or, reg or the regular treats. Um, but instead, um, I got, like my vet recommended carrots or cucumbers actually. So he, I, I don't, I've never done cucumbers with him. I'm not sure if he would like it, but he's always he's always liked carrots. I know that for a fact because I've been feeding them to him since he was little. So he loves it. And I give him carrots every night before bed. And honestly, it's helped so much. He barely throws up now um, in the morning. So I guess just feeding him carrots before bed is really good. Um, it's definitely helped with his gastritis, but any healthy snacks you may want to give them throughout the day. I mean, besides the treats, you could give them their three treats, but I never recommend their dog treats, like the like the kibble dog treats, uh, like more than three a day. So I would suggest if you already reached your three day lim three a day limit for them, um, start giving them like blueberries or strawberries or even bananas. I know they love bananas. Like Storm and Maddie go crazy for banana. Um, so they love their bananas, um, but they also said to not give too many bananas because like it, it's really high in sugar, which can lead to diabetes as well. So just make sure that you give them everything in a, a good amount because obviously like they say, too much of anything is bad for you. So, but yeah, that's about it. One last important thing I really want to talk to you guys about is, um, the maintenance of, uh, keeping up with the Frenchie, like keeping them clean, keeping them healthy, keeping their, sh keeping their coat shiny, um, make, and making sure they're just, you know, happy, clean puppies at the end of the day. So basically, um, when it comes to bathing a dog, a Frenchie, so I used to use just regular uh, shampoo, like regular dog shampoo, any dog shampoo for him. Little did I know, uh, I shouldn't, they told me, um, I noticed like he was getting like really patchy hair like and all that stuff. They told me that it could just be an allergy to that shampoo. So the best you could use is oatmeal and aloe. Um, so that's what I did. I changed his shampoo. Hi, Mama. So I changed his shampoo 
and they now use another shampoo. It's like called Earthbound. Um, it's oatmeal and aloe actually, and it's actually a shampoo and conditioner. Previously, I was just using a two-in-one shampoo. It was like papaya and coconut. Um, I forgot the brand name for that one, but it was a two-in-one. But they told me this one is highly recommended. It's one of the best shampoos, best dog shampoos you can use. And honestly, I've seen such a difference since I started using it on them. Their coat was just much more shinier. They smell so good all the time. Um, but yes, yeah, so one thing I do want to say is they don't recommend, um, the doctors don't recommend um, bathing your French Bulldog, or any dog, I think, um, that frequently. I mean, you should bathe them maybe like once a month, if so. But bathing them like every two weeks or, all, or every week is just not good for their skin. It dries out their skin way too much. So they say at least once a month if you're going to bathe your dog. Um, so always just, you know, make sure they're clean. Um, usually when we bathe them, oh my god, they're going crazy right now. So usually when I, we bathe them, um, we do everything all at once. Um, well, for the, the teeth brushing, we brush your teeth every day. You're supposed to brush your dog's teeth every day just to um, avoid any tooth decay in the future, avoid any gum disease any of that that could just lead to like worse things in their mouth eventually so brushing your teeth every brushing your teeth every day is crucial but once we take their bath when we take them a bath we uh brush your teeth um right after the bath so the way we do it is we shampoo we we rinse we condition we rinse after that um we towel dry them um, you have to dry them very well or else they could get a neat, like um, pneumonia if they're out in the cold. So what we do is towel dry them and as soon as they're, like, we know they're damp, we um, go over with, the, with the, the blow dryer to make sure they're um, dry enough. But that's in our old apartment. Now we live in a new apartment. They actually have like a little pet spot on their stairs where you take your dog to, um, to take a bath and that way you don't have to do it in your apartment and get your apartment messy. So we've been doing that, but the room is super cold. I don't know if it's because like the bacteria, um, just to like kill off any bacteria that from any of the dogs. So I actually invested in buying a robe. Uh, so you guys will see that because uh, it, it's so cute and it's just to keep him warm so he doesn't get sick um, after his bath. I know it's silly, but honestly, like you have to take care of them like you would take care of a child. Um, so after we bathe them and blow dry them, we go in to clean their ears. Ear cleaning with, with French Bulldogs is so important just because they have these bat-like ear structure where their, their, their ears are huge and they don't have that much hair in the ear. So um, it, 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 leaves, it, leaves like air, it leaves like a lot of room for like dust particles and bacteria to get in there. So one of the main things to do is clean your dog's ear very well with an ear cleaner. Um, a, a good ear cleaner, of course, nothing that has like um, fragrances or any of that just because it could give your dog an ear infection and that's why you're cleaning your, your, your dog's ear to avoid the ear infection because um, they can get ear infections if you don't clean them. So every time they get a bath, we make sure the ears are dry and the water gets in there. We clean it. Uh, we get a cotton swab. Well, first we actually put the ear cleaner in the ear, like just to let it, we rub it in. Then we go in with the cotton swab, put it on the cotton swab and like go in their ear, make sure, you know, and don't be shy, get in there, know where the ear, the cotton shop isn't gonna fall on the ear. I know that's what I was scared about in the beginning when I first got him and started cleaning his ears, but they told me not to be afraid to get in there because that's how, you know, you get everything out. And then we wipe their paws. Um, we make sure their paws, we have paw wipes. I know, yeah, you take them a bath and they're like, you know, their paws get wet, but um, we have special paw wipes that just get in there way better and we just, you know, it helps with any residue that might be left from the bath because sometimes it's really hard to get it in the bath because they don't want to lift up their paws and stuff. So we make sure to um, wipe their paws with their paw, uh, paw wipes. Um, they have like Jojo butter, I think that's if I'm saying it right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, it just makes it softer, it makes them any of that and then we have also have tear stain wipes um she doesn't get it as often as he does i guess it's just like with their their fur color some fur colors are more prone to the to the uh, tear stains than others so he's like lighter on the face so his tear stains show more and um so i wipe his tear stains every day also i don't only do it when i shower him but after i shower him i do it as well but 
the tear stains I clean every day because if you don't clean the flaps in the, in the face, they could also get a skin infection in there as well. But yeah, so um, that's about it. That's really how to keep a French Bulldog nice and clean. Oh, 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 oh,